This is Illuminating. Alright, coming in from BangQ is the BangQ Screen Bar Plus e-reading lamp. This is a particularly cool looking uh, lamp that goes across the top of your screen. It's designed to replace the typical desk lamp and it illuminates the area below your screen to reduce eye strain and all that kind of stuff. It's USB powered, it's got an auto dimmer, it's dimmable, and it's got a cool and warm light. Uh, it costs around about £120. You can get it off Amazon today. And uh, you do this, you clip it on in such a way that it sits on top of your screen and uh, hook it up. There's a wee controller and you can go here to find out more information. There's the English one. So. Whenever you're sitting up late at night, a lot of people tend to use their desk lamp to be able to see their keyboard if they don't have a backlit illuminated one, or uh, they could be trying to type from something they're reading from, or have any number of things lying around their desk. This should alleviate that a good bit. So, in here we have something. Here we have light sensor, auto dimmer, brightness adjustment indicator, hue adjustment indicator, power dial, and brightness hue adjustment switch. Very little on that side. There it is, very neatly presented. We're very close in there, I decided to expand it a little. Okay, so we have, oh, wow, that's pretty heavy. Um, this, which must be all the technical wizardry behind it, I think. That, that, maybe it just holds it in place. A counterbalance, because that will sit on top of your uh, screen and this will hold it in place. It needs to have a counterbalance, otherwise it'll fall forward. This way it won't. So, yeah. Seems to have some kind of sensor here. Or no, that's uh, rubberized so it doesn't scrape the back of your screen. Then there's a bit of protective plastic around there. Nice logo on the side. And the same on this side. And a hook. We also have the controller. Um, which has a bit of cardboard here. To show you which way this is pointing doesn't really have much of a difference because it keeps going all the one direction but there's a maybe it's just telling you to remove it very handy small cardboard screwdriver so that's for dimming and then that was your light sensor so as the room darkens the light will get brighter as it brightens it'll gradually turn off then this is your auto dimmer where it allows you to turn it off and on or you can set it yourself your brightness hue adjustment adjustment switch so flipping between and I'm guessing these LEDs indicate which you happen to be on then there's a fairly long flat cable nice one thank you flat cables are the best for computers I believe uh, that is a USB does appear to be a divider in the middle of this just make it a little more exciting we have that going off to a micro USB and this going off to a USB type A. Do we have to have them both plugged in? Only time will tell. Then on the underside of this, it's rubberized so it doesn't slide too easily across your desk. It'll sit there quite nicely. It's always nice to have wee round things under your computer screen anyway that you can tinker with. I quite like them. And finally, the light array. This is possibly the most exciting part of it, I'd say. Okay, so we have a micro USB here. Ah, that's where that one goes to. Then we have a sort of metallic aluminium frame around it. It's in a circular shape. 
but not quite a circular shape. Sure, someone will correct me on what shape that actually is. It's circular with a bit cut out of it. Then in there you can see a row of LEDs, making it quite low power. And then there's a silver bit, which is a reflector of, of some description, that bounces it out. Nothing on this side either. There's no controls or anything on this. It is just an LED uh, light. Simple as that. We're not allowed to see what's underneath. Obviously there's buried treasure of some description. So, we take this, and I'm guessing we put this in here, like so. Oop. Making sure that this micro USB is visible to connect up to the power supply. I was digging around in one of my cupboards and I happened to find this old piece of rubbish. If we open her up, then we can use this as a test example. <laughs> well, I suppose it it does sit on there. It's a little bit bigger than the screen, but it works. I'm going to plug this into power, but you can also plug it into the machine. This doesn't turn on without uh, an actual... I suppose we could. Right, this is gonna, where we're going to find out that this, <laughs> the USBs on this don't work. <clears throat> okay, so we've got it plugged in. We'll set the controller up here so you can see it in shot. Okay, so it's plugged in. Ooh, there's stuff on the screen. Okay, so that's us plugged in. <clears throat> Old Mac Book Pro on, just about. And we're going to try to turn this on. Okay, so the USBs on this MacBook don't work. Good to know. There we have it turned on and it is illuminating the keyboard. We can adjust it. So you can see most of the keyboard, but you can see most importantly down in front of it. And it's a nice white light, a natural light. And we can dim it. Okay, so we're not making much progress. It's turned off. If I tap it to turn on, it flashes. I'm under no impression that there is a battery inside it. If I cover up the sensor to make it totally dark, <laughs> we still don't get full power from it. None of the other buttons do anything. And the instructions are not entirely useful. They tell us what the buttons do, but they don't actually tell us how to turn it on and keep it on. Okay, so after much messing about, I've managed to get it to work and stay on constantly, which is good. I don't know what it was I'd done wrong, but I had obviously done something incorrectly. So, we can adjust the brightness thusly, and then turn it back down again. That seems to be the lowest there. And that's the brightest there, so it's not that much of a difference, I suppose, if I turn out the studio light. You may very well get a better idea of what I'm talking about. There it goes down-ish and up-ish. So it is a good bright light on the, on the area. It gives you about a foot of space to work in. Pressing that allows it to adjust the brightness. For the auto dimmer, because I've turned the studio lights off, it's now detecting that it needs to be at its peak brightness. The green light is currently on for the auto dimmer. Then if I use the brightness hue, we can change the color of the light. Uh, there's a nice sort of orangey, warm winter color that you'd like. And then a, a more of a bluish, cold light, which is exceptionally bright uh, and, and looks really good to be honest um, so it would depend entirely on what you happen to be doing which which light you would prefer 
So it has options. Um, to be honest, this is £199 uh, for a light that does this, and it, it is very high quality, it has to be said. I don't know if many people are going to run out and buy it. There, you can see the, that a little better in the light. Um, I, I couldn't justify having one myself, as opposed to a, a desk lamp, which you can pay 20 to 100 quid for, I suppose, that has got different functions. But this is obviously tidier, it takes up a lot less space on the desk, save for this little doohickey here that will obviously take up a little bit of space on your desk, but it's dedicated. Uh, the cables can be concealed quite nicely behind the computer and if you have a desktop monitor then you probably won't notice them at all because it should be able to plug into the USB on the monitor. So there's lots of pros and cons to them. I guess someone who's watching this is really considering going out and getting one. Uh, you're not going to be randomly watching this I don't think. Um, if so you're probably just fascinated as to how someone can actually spend £200 on a piece of hardware like this. Let's go to auto just to see what it, what it does. I really like the idea of this. I, I am a bit swayed whenever I see this set up. It looks quite nice. I would like to be sitting using my computer with this on and I will be this evening. I'll attach this to my 27 inch uh, desktop screen and see how well it does. There isn't I don't think any other sizes of the actual LED bar. One has to keep in mind that you need to have a 5 volt 1 amp power supply to be able to power this. I was having trouble because I was plugging it into something that didn't drop an amp. It was less than an amp. Alright, so if you have any questions, let me know in the comments box down below. Hit that subscribe button and give us a wee thumbs up if you fancy. Remember to tune in to Talk Sport on a Wednesday morning at half past midnight for all the crazy goings on in the world of gadgetry. And other than that, take care.